This is... Wait, we should establish, like, what we want to talk about. What are the bullet points we need to hit here? I I got it. I got it. Okay, so we tell them that the show is called Do You Want to Make a Podcast? It is a fireside chat between two best friends who are on the hunt to create the perfect podcast. They have a lot of ideas, and they can't decide what they want to talk about. Okay. That's pretty much it. That's it. We that's 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 the synopsis. Like, then we'll then we'll plug the do we social want to media. Do like social media. Yeah, stuff? yeah, yeah. So so we'll tell them to follow us at Do You Want to Pod, all spelled out. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can also email us at Do You Want to Make a Podcast at Gmail That's it. That works for me. Wait, I think we just did it. We did it. That was my that was my plan all along. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye. Except hello, because now the show's starting. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's like really, really professional right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look so professional with all my board games in the background. Just hanging Don't worry, out. My, mo- my mom hit me up five minutes ago. She says, Monopoly tonight at 7 o'clock. And I was like, I can't. She was like, well, what else are you doing? Self-quarantine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> are no, you-, you, you can't because Monopoly is the worst game ever made. What? Who said that? I did. I actually I, like it. I have, str- I have strong opinions about Monopoly. But don't get me started, or else I'll. Sheen, are you are you in apartment? Are you with your folks still? What's the? I'm with my folks currently. So how yeah. it's working for me is I'm one of those rare breeds that is sacrificing his twenties to pay off all of his debt instead of just part of his debt. Right. So it kind of stinks, but at the same time, it's worth it. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is there's no way you can hide from this monopoly at seven. Thing. <laughs> My parents <laughs> thought I moved out six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hide from them in the house, like in different rooms? You just scurry about. I just there's a there's a gate outside with a bunch of ivy on it that I climb up to the attic window every day. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> oh man. Um, well, I say we uh, I say we get this party started. Yeah. So I guess just Ryan, if you can. Are you on a laptop right now? I'm on an iPad. Is this okay. good? It's, what do you it's want good. Me no, it's no, good. No, you're Just good. However, however close you can comfortably get to the microphone without like... Oh, it's in my, it's in oh, my it's, ears. It's in your... Oh, the mic's in your ears. Perfect. Oh, the, at the AirPods. We got AirPods, people. Excellent. Love awesome. Them. So I bet that's going to... That is probably going to sound really good. Uh, AirPods, okay. AirPods give me anxiety. Do you, do you, like, I could never have AirPods because I would constantly live in fear that, that, cause, cause uh, I, I have regular iPod headphones and they always fall out. So I would live in fear that my, uh, my AirPods would fall out and then I would lose them. And then I would be sans AirPods. It's a fair point. Now, now in, in this, do we have video or can we see video? Can everyone see video? We all I mean, can see each other yeah, right now. I, yeah, we. I can see you. Well, for the masses, I mean, is, it, is the, the, the well, the you know, Zoom does <laughs> create Zoom does create a video recap, so maybe we upload this to YouTube. Yeah, I was just gonna show uh, <laughs> my uh, the AirPod. I was gonna show you if you could see it. It's got like a, a different shape than just like the uh, the average old earbud. Uh, okay, and so kind of kind of holds its uh, grip in your ear a little bit. Yeah, I'll, 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 maybe one day, maybe one day Apple will, con- Apple convinces me to buy a lot of things. <laughs> Every time, uh, that's why I never upgrade my phone because I, I always get nervous that, uh, that they're going to twist my arm to get me to buy something else. So it's all good. It's a fair fear. Uh, yeah. Ryan's video just cut out. There he is. He's back. No, you guys, you guys are going to judge me. So I've been wearing my AirPods for five minutes and I just uh-huh. realized that I've just been wearing them and listening out of the iPad, but couldn't tell. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, this does sound clear. And now it's way better. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. Love yeah, you, so you, you sound different. You sound even better. Now. It's excellent. It's excellent. It's, it's possible. I love, I, Good. I've done that. No judgment here. No judgment here. <laughs> it's a safe, it's a safe space. Yes. Safe space. Yeah. Um, 
So I say we just get this party started. Uh, yes. We have we have Ryan Patrick Sheehan joining us today in our COVID nineteen world. It's good to see everybody. This, in this trying time, in this trying <laughs> time, we're inviting our friends onto the show to to lift our spirit, and our wings, so that way, hey we guys, all, all fly. Hey Hello, guys, Ryan thanks, for, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. I'm gonna walk us through the COVID-19 pandemic just one step at a time, guys. Great. Excellent. Perfect. That's what I needed so uh, yeah, we, That's all you can do. If you take more than one step at a time, then uh, you then you trip. I just imagine then you're you outside. Take... <laughs> yeah. Then, <laughs> then you're outside. <laughs> then you're outside. And you're, and you're in trouble. And that's Which is... counterproductive. And that I also is... imagine taking like really long strides. Like once more than one step is like you just lunging to take... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> giant step and um, you don't want that because well it, uh, you ca- you do want that in order to maintain that six feet of distance right you need to yeah, so like if you take big, a long big steps. long six foot stride then you can be confident that uh, as long as you don't take it towards a person every time you're be confident good. that you're always six feet away yeah um <laughs> before we get too into it uh we should uh ask the sacred question uh Jim Bloss and Ryan Sheehan, would you like to make a podcast? Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. All right. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. Oh, oh, heck yeah. Good. Heck yeah. So, Ryan, I don't know if we told you that you're the guest for our 100th episode. This is a big What? Occasion. Yes. <laughs> what? It is. And, and last week, Jim called it the best thing ever. He said this is going to be called the Spanktacular. So you are here... <laughs> For the I spanktacular. Did, I did All right, say I that. guess we have to use our video then. Yes. <laughs> My first question, Mr. Sheehan, is how does one celebrate the spanktacular? Well, first is you don't get offended because I've been waiting for you guys to call me to invite me on this show. <laughs> and now I know that you waited 99 episodes just to ask me. So now, I, now I'm honored. Great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because because we we knew we needed a, a a true celebration for for 100, and we and we knew that this was it. So. I think this COVID nineteen thing is uh, was this around during your 99th? It was. Yeah. It, it was. was. Okay, that okay, that, okay. that was our that was our first our first one uh in 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 the trying time as I like to call it. Well, I think the big thing we could do for the spectacular is now that everyone's inside, everyone's keeping away from each other maybe listen to more podcasts now maybe even this one uh we can give them a show we give them maybe a show. i, I <laughs> hope so a <laughs> show <laughs> fantastic yes so so what makes it as as the corner of the word uh, uh i would like to know what what uh, uh what makes it uh a spanktacular as this, opposed to this right spectacular. here what? Making these buns. Oh, don't. <laughs> see, oh, yeah. I, see, this was what this was what I was afraid of. This was this was my truly greatest fear. For the listener, I was spanking my booty. Well, yes, I hope that that got picked. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. I hope it didn't get picked up on audio because Jim, I think you need to embrace the spectacular because that felt so good to do. Just wake up those buns. Why? Oh, just to because that's what, because we've been sitting for so long. Yes, it feels we've all get been the blood sitting. moving. Yeah, you gotta get the blood in the buns. You gotta get the blood in the buns. Maybe mm. the spectacular is the way to uh, avoid what some folks are calling the quarantine fifteen, uh, the period of inactivity that could lead to significant weight gain in this new world that we're living in. Oh, don't even get me started. So maybe you should get up, jump around, and spank those buns. Get the blood pumping. Yes. Everybody, right now, everybody listening, get up, spank those buns. There we Make go, sure Ryan. It. There we go. There it goes. I didn't know right. you could see me, but I was just taking the lesson. I, I was really <laughs> serious about doing it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's jumping around. Yeah. Get get re reinvigorate yourself, baby. Come on. Oh, Ooh, throw yeah. some punches, Mister Boxing Man. Fantastic. You love to see it. You love to see it. <laughs> All right. Um, but so I don't think the spectacular though is 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 good for a 
a regular podcast. Well, at this in the trying time, it probably is. It's just great to- for a viral Instagram hashtag and campaign. Like everyone do <laughs> videos of themselves spanking their buns and do hashtag spanktacular 2020. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. Speaking of uh, speaking of viral campaigns, you guys see that new show on Netflix called Tiger King? I've heard. I have heard about it, but about I ha- but I haven't I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> watch it. <laughs> but I but I probably I mean I w- I probably wouldn't watch it if I wasn't cooped up. But I'm cooped. I'm cooped. This I'm is here. the best time I'm- to watch it. Exactly. Well, that's why <laughs> my 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 uh, my Jill and I. Jill and I have uh, started watching uh, The Circle. Ooh, I love that show. Netflix, which is very good. Uh, Are you talking I, the Emma Watson movie or the TV series with all the no, people trapped in a house? The TV series with all the people good. trapped in apartments and they can only yes. talk via uh, social media. <laughs> the and best show ever. <laughs> it, it really is. It, and it's like it's like weirdly... Uh, Fitting right now? Well, it is very fitting. I like knew I was going to watch it uh, during while we were all stuck here because it was so like true to life in this moment. But it it also is like very like weirdly wholesome almost. Like huh. it is. Like, like like the first episode is terrible, and you're like, wow, all these people suck. And then <laughs> and, and then like first off, they get rid of some of the people that suck pretty quickly uh and then <laughs> and then like the remaining people are all like really like wholesome and and pretty genuine like even the people that are like catfishing cuz like that's the whole premise is like you know some of the people are catfishes and they and they need to like try and, and people are trying to like <laughs> suss them out um like even those people are like all nice it's, it's yeah, just, Joe. It's Joe, have you have you nice. seen this have you is, seen this show? No, I am okay under a rock. So for Joe and for anyone listening, all right. So this is a really cool premise for a show. So what they do, I think Netflix themselves like bought an apartment building, and yeah. what they did is that yeah, literally, I, I literally think they bought an apartment building, and then they mm-hmm. got I think let's J- Jim. What would you say? Like like eight people at first. Yeah, it's eight. It's eight at the start. Yeah. Yeah, eight at the start. So they take eight people. And they all have like wild personalities. Some are more like low key than others. And they put them all over this apartment building and they're pretty much just, they all are like separated. No one knows what they look like. No one knows what they sound like. Um, But there's TVs and cameras all around each of their apartments. And there's this social media within the show called the circle. And the goal of the show is to become the most popular person by the end of the show. You get a person gets eliminated each round. So you say this, Hey, Hey, Circle, message Samantha. Um, hey, how you doing, babe? And it's like their profile looks like some handsome guy, but it's like they're really just some like oh. old old woman or something pretending to oh, be a young, handsome guy. <laughs> it's, it's – oh. and, and like you hear that and you're like, oh, they're probably all like so skeevy. But no, like it's – like eat like even uh, – some. There's one person on right now that I'm like, oh, this person's the worst. But uh, uh, it's the it's the guy who's pretending to be hotter than he really is. Adam, I think, is his name. I don't like. Oh him. yeah, yeah. I don't like yeah. him. But uh, <laughs> uh, he's the only guy. We're like halfway through the season right now. We just met the last person, which is uh, Ed. Which I is, love Ed. Which is so. <laughs> it's so weird. Oh, it's so good though. Um, but but a lot of the people are like very genuine and the, the best part of the show to me is you know they vote on who the who to who they like the most essentially like they rank all the people in the circle every every so often and then the top two people decide who to block from the circle so like essentially the top two people kick somebody out of the show and when somebody leaves they get to go to one other person's apartment to meet them and yeah. And and that part of the show is just so good. Drama. It's so, it's so good. The drama is so good. Because sometimes they go to someone where they're like, hey, man, what the heck? And and, and they go to talk. And then sometimes they go uh, to meet somebody that they really had a connection with. And they want to, like, 
talk to them more and like actually meet them face to face to make sure that they were what they say they were. Ooh. And it's just, and like the heart to hearts that are had when, you know, this person that you've been talking to and having a connection with over only through written word. Yeah. And then you like talk to them face to face and you're it's, it's I've very been good. there actually in my life. It did yeah, not we're go, talking about it, Joe's life right now. <laughs> I, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I, it did not go as well as I wanted it to when I met the <laughs> person in real life. And I should have like known from that first interaction that this is not a connection that I should pursue, but God damn, did I just continue to try to make it happen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Hilarious. Uh. So let me, ask you this. let me yeah. ask you this. Have you guys ever been catfished? I've never really done any online dating at all. So there's yeah. no room there's no room to be catfished. I, so I you've bit- never catfished either? Oh no, definitely not. I don't have the confidence to do that. I don't have the confidence <laughs> or or the level of insecurity. I don't know yeah. I don't know which one it really takes, but I don't have either one. <laughs> I, I can't say that I have. Have you, Mr. Sheehan, been catfished? No, no, but here's the thing. I, I like asking that question. The first one, have you ever been catfished? Because everyone's always like, no, no, no way. But how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> you could have. Fair point. That's, that's true. Because because I, because I my first line, anytime I meet someone uh, only digitally, is I say, uh, I need to meet you face-to-face immediately. <laughs> Immediately, where can where can we meet? Where, where can we meet in a public place? I'm Jim. Where do you live? <laughs> yeah, some people say ASL. I say, give me your address immediately. I I wonder if technically yes, from just being on Tinder and swiping through profiles in the past, the folks I never actually met could have been catfishing me, and I never really knew. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I've never had a. Uh, interaction where i meet someone i'm like oh <laughs> yeah are you david oh god um it, it is pouring outside like, i thought it, though? it was gonna yeah i thought it was gonna light rain it's actually coming i love when it rains this hard the rain is just slapping yes. down onto the pavement and or spanking down not it's not the slap tag it's, <laughs> it's a spank spanking tag. it's a spanking that, that rain, rain yeah. is spanking the pavement i think Spank hurricane pavement, schwartz baby. said that yeah, I went out. I went out this morning. Uh, we had to go scavenge scavenge for supplies at Walmart. Um, so, <laughs> so, so I went out and I went out like right. I like rolled out of bed and left for Walmart. And uh, so I was like still half asleep as I like put my stuff together. So I was like, oh, I'll just wear my slippers. And hmm. then it rained. And uh, that was a, that kids. Don't wear your slippers out, especially if there is even a remote chance it might rain. Just don't, just don't do that. Is so now, the, my, now my slippers are all wet. My slippers are all wet. Is uh, poor, poor is, Jim? Is the feeling of wet slippers even worse than the feeling of wet socks? Uh, probably because wet socks, I know I can throw in the dryer and they'll be fine. Wet slippers, I'm not sure if if, if they got truly, truly soaked. Uh, it probably would be really bad, but there they were. They, it it wasn't terrible, so I, I think, think I think been, they'll be okay. Yeah, I don't think I've I've been that deep in a relationship where I start being like, "Is wet slippers worse than wet socks?" <laughs> I I ask because <laughs> wet socks is one of my least favorite sensations, if not my least favorite sensation. Uh, mm. Oh yeah. Memory. Uh, I also am wondering if your wet slippers made your slippers more slippery. Mm. <laughs> Clever girl. Mm-hmm. Um, no, <laughs> no. Uh, well, maybe I don't know. Well, the thing about the thing about slip. <laughs> what makes us so? <laughs> Okay. What well, makes, makes a, a slipper, slipper slip, Jim? Slip. Yeah. Well, that that's the thing. Slippers, the 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 feet of the slipper, the actual sole. That's the word I'm looking for. That's the word I couldn't find. The sole of the slipper is non-slip. It's mm-hmm. got that grip, so that way you don't slip everywhere. The but slip- the spirit of a slipper is very fluid. That's true. That's <laughs> true. That's so true. That's it's, so. Mwah. It's funny. So these these oh, 
these things have the name slippers, but if you tried one on and actually slipped around, you probably would not buy it. You'd be like, no, these slippers are slippery. Do I need to do I need to explain why slippers are called slippers? Do, or would that ruin the I'm gonna do it just so somebody doesn't at me with it. And then if we want to cut it later, we can. <laughs> slippers are slippers because you slip into them. They're easy they're shoes that you can slip uh, into. Slip Wait. off, slip off. Wait, are we are we for real there with that? O? For real, for real. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, that's why they're slippers. You slip, you the foot slips into them. Not they don't slip on the floor. If you want to make a slip on the floor slipper, that's called a banana peel. <laughs> so <laughs> does that make loafers? Do you have like a lazy attitude as you put those on, like you loaf into them? Yes, <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes. And sneakers, you have to. You have to sneak into your sneakers. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you don't? Oh, I yeah, I only I only get into my sneakers with the lights off when no one else can see me. Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to that's why you always have to come up uh, sneakers from behind. If you come if you come into a sneaker from the front, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. No success. You got to come at the sneaker from behind. Do you uh, do you formally address your dress shoe before you put them on? You're like, ah, oh, yes, sir, sir, dress shoe. Lovely to make your acquaintance as you're don't, popping it on your foot there. I don't understand why you're asking all these questions. Of course I do. <laughs> of course I do. You fool! How could you? How could you assume anything different? I'm just making sure. I know. I know. It's good. It's all good. <sighs> I'm trying to think of another type of shoe now. You can boot your way into boots. You just kick at it until yeah. it's on your foot. Again, on your you foot, <laughs> your foot. You don't kick. You don't kick your boots onto your feet. Uh, only every day. Only every day. So here, here's a question. Yeah, I, 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 love I questions. told my, I told myself I wasn't going to get political, but here we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you guys wear pajamas? Uh, yes. Yes. Do you wear pajamas to bed? No. There's a question. Correct. Yeah. I was so glad you asked that follow up. Yes, sort of, maybe. So I'm in, right, I'm in a pajama outfit right now. If I when I go to bed, I typically uh, go to bed a uh, sans pajama shirt because because <laughs> uh, I'm a sweaty lad and the shirt makes me sweaty sweaty more <laughs> i only asked just because i don't know if it was just me but i've always been someone that overheats when they go to bed so yes. i always just, oh my god yes i i free ball it i go up up and down the court and i that's what i do so nice. up until then i'm in jeans and whatever <laughs> i'm wearing that day and then they just and then they come it's off, off. there like is no the transition <laughs> with the pajamas it is all or nothing wow i can't speak today nothing on off switch uh i also am sweaty sweaty sweat man when i go to bed so yep. typically it's boxers for me yep that's hot thank you <laughs> here in the spanktacular oh uh, yeah spank it baby we could also <laughs> with the spanktacular tell like stories of us like winning at games where we in in the manner of speaking spank the other where competitors I, where i spanked my opponents yeah yeah. Well, did it make it into this podcast where we talked about? Did we did we press play when we were talking about my mom's invite tonight at seven o'clock Monopoly you board? Bet it did. That made it in. Okay. Well. That's, oh yeah. She's getting spanked tonight. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, uh, edit, edit that out. She, what's <laughs> your, no, that's what's in. What's, what's your best uh, line of the day? What's your uh, Monopoly Spank. spanking strategy? How, okay, how, so, how how do you spank at Monopoly? All right. So this is cheap. So the first thing you do Great. is you, you play this. The, no, I'm, I actually love Monopoly. And it, it was funny because I, I always like bowed into the whole thing like, oh, I'm playing Monopoly for seven hours. It's going to stink. Grandma, go away. Stuff like that. But it's, it's good. When I went to college, we had this pretty big snowstorm. And we yeah. were all kind of trapped in the building. And the girls at the time really liked Monopoly. And I didn't really get it. So yeah. we started doing it all the time. Like everyone, we, our little friend group just kept playing Monopoly and we made a new way to do it, which was, I don't know if it's our creation, but we just kind of came up with it. But I, I have heard that other people do it as well. You guys know the free parking corner? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Every, every time you owe money, 
to the bank for any reason, you owe money for this or that. You just put the money in the middle of the board. And then yeah. whoever lands on free parking gets the pot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that quickens the game so much more. You, yeah. you, I've had games that were like 45 minutes. Nice. I love that. My mom has it coming. So that's how you 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 play with that altered strategy in mind and thus spank your mother at Monopoly. And then and then you just land on free parking every turn and you get all <laughs> you just get all the money. I think ever I think that you know what the rookie move is in Monopoly? How I know you're a rookie? Huh. How? You buy boardwalk. <laughs> okay. If you're, okay. Buying, if you're buying boardwalk in your first few laps around the board. I'm like, okay, they're going to lose this. Because Ooh. the people that are buying, like, Connecticut, I'm talking the light blues, or New York, the oranges, <laughs> or St. Charles Place, the pinks, those are where winners that is, buy. That is where the money the money can be. Yeah, but only if you get a Monopoly. That's and it's the only hard $100, part. It's $100 a house versus 150 yeah. or 200 a house. So yeah, yeah. it's easy to build. Yeah. Oh, I like this. Uh, yeah. Huh. The, the the issue I have about Monopoly, I mean, I have a lot of issues about Monopoly, but <laughs> let them out, uh, Jim. Oh, yeah, here it comes. See, I said, don't get me started, and then we did. Uh, one is that there's no finite end to the game, and and it's a game where people get eliminated, and then they're out, and then the game could go on for like another four hours. There's a uh, finite way to win, though. And you have oh. to just lose. You have to lose a friend or sacrifice someone in your family. <laughs> once, once they're done, you you can feel victorious. You have to you have to betray everyone you love. It's like Survivor. It's like Monopoly is at, Monopoly is at home Survivor essentially. Mm-hmm. I thought the finite way to end the game was just to like slap the spank the board and like yeah. Spank everything oh yeah, flip that table. <laughs> spank, flip, spank a, that, flip a house, flip a house, that flip table. A yeah, literally flip a house. Every house on the Monopoly board. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I think the only Monopoly that really ever mattered to me as a wee lad was McDonald's Monopoly. Just, oh, did you hear uh, about the uh, the McDonald's scandal on HBO? They're no, going? what McMillions? Get out of here! Oh, God, you that, guys make it. Is what? that about? Uh, is that about how the Monopoly game was rigged for a long time? Yes, did you did you hear about this? I've, I've heard about it. I didn't know they made a, a, a if they made a show about it. I haven't heard that, but I've read, right, I've, so read I've read the story. To all our listeners, guys, I swear I don't just watch TV all day. It seems I'm, I'm the only one that knows about what's going on on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, there's a show called Mick Millions. It's a series on I believe HBO. I just said I said the words I believe to make it look like I didn't watch the whole thing. But um, yeah, it's 100 percent on HBO. And it's a real case in like the 90s through the 2000s. Uh, this like detective figured it out. Like, I don't know how he did it, but he took all the winners of the Monopoly game and he realized like they're all kind of connected. Like they're all like, oh, no I'm this, uh, that's my niece. That's my uncle. That's my cousin. That's... And what? they rigged the entire thing. And it went, McDonald's, one of the biggest, probably the biggest fast food chain on the planet. Maybe, maybe Subway might be it, but it's, yeah, it's, it, it, went on for like 10 15 years and so many oh. people made money yeah oh it was like the God. they 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 would like pull out the uh, the winning the the ones that would let you the the pieces that would let you win the big prize they would like pull them out or like they would know where they they went oh man so they could go so it wasn't like somebody that worked at McDonald's it was whoever was producing the actual like game pieces Knew I'm, like somebody that works like security there or something like that n- knew where they went and like was able to. It's crazy. It's I'm, a crazy. It's a crazy story. I'm just realizing how naive I am because as a kid, I didn't even realize there was money on the table. I was just like, oh, free just love, fries. Just love the little pieces. Fuck yeah, they are. It is so fun. And Any, anytime I get a fast food thing, like it doesn't like it doesn't motivate me to go back again Mm. like like it's supposed to marketing wise but i do just love like just like pulling off the little the little tab something satisfying about that i thought it was kind of silly from the get-go to kind of get kids to start playing monopoly at fast food places it's like oh my gosh that's a complicated game for kids like (laughs) of all games like connect four might have been a better start (laughs) yeah (laughs) go fish (laughs) candy land (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, Ooh, Candyland. I Candy love Candyland. Great game. Great game. It just another game. Uh, it's it's a game that's decided when the game begins, more or less. Who's gonna win? Re- but really, I mean, essentially, because it's um, it's just a deck of cards that you keep drawing from that tells you where you get to move next. Mm. Okay. So the order that you draw the cards kind of dictates where you're gonna go. So technically. Well, there goes all my fond memories of Candyland. I mean, it's still a fun game. <laughs> I thought I was kids. so good at it. It's still a fun game for kids, but it requires zero skill. <laughs> That's why I loved it. <laughs> this is Joe's claim to fame. Yo, Joe, do you remember years ago? You remember, uh, you guys both remember Halo, right? The Halo series. On oh, yeah. Xbox? oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember I used to play that, like, religiously. And I was never, ever big into video games. I, like, I just kind of... I don't know. I just, I, I'd play one and then I'd play that for like a year and then I just would put it down for five years mm-hmm. and then I'd pick yeah. it up in another five years, the same exact game. I wouldn't even buy a new game. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, Halo was that one game that I played for like ever. That was the best. Just the f- original Halo? Halo 1? I think that was the first one that like when Microsoft kind of came out with their own system, the Xbox, like Halo was the one that like I think yeah. we bought when I was yeah. like, I don't know, I'm 10 years old. Yep. But that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, with Did having... you guys have a favorite game? Ooh. Are we talking video games or all games? We're talking board games, video games. Any game? Any, any game. Instead, I'm not talking like tag or hide and seek. Something to pass the time. Oh, kind of all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something to pass the time in this trying time. Yeah. We need suggestions um, for our followers here. I will yeah. say, I, I will say, uh, Jill and I, well, we went to Target last week to scavenge for supplies. Uh, we did go and look at the games there, and we did. Um, I rent ironically by uh, the board game Pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Great, <laughs> which is which uh, is a very it, first off, it is a very good game. Did you buy it for knowledge reasons, like just so you know how to get out of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we we bought it. I mean, we a manual it, yeah, primarily to, to, <laughs> to know how to how, how to survive in this. Ooh, this will come in handy. No, no, I'm I I kid. It, I mean, it's not going to give you. I mean. Uh, oftentimes you lose in that game because Pandemic's actually a cooperative game where you play against the game and you try to you try and cure the world of a global pandemic. Okay. Uh, uh, and it's very difficult, and oftentimes you lose, but it is it is very fun. Uh, um, nice. I'm a big fan, uh, but we we haven't opened it yet to play it here yet. Um, Why are you a big fan? You never opened it. I've played it with other people. I just didn't oh open it myself. okay. I thought you just found this game and then we're already giving it praise and you never no, opened no, it. No, I'm like, no, okay, no. Jim. <laughs> no, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with the game. I've played it before, but I haven't. I I haven't played my own personal copy. It still has the shrink wrap on it. Oh yeah. Uh, Joseph, do you do you have a game to recommend for the kids at home? Yeah, uh, it's called Tic Tac Toe. Is my favorite oh, game. Great game. Um, Who's that? It's, and it's not the game itself. It is. The game that experienced tic tac toers play, which is just a game of persistence, because if the first three moves of tic tac toe, you're going to know if there's a winner or if it's a draw. And so, if you just get two people that know what they're doing, they will play game after game after game. It's just like who's going to crack, who's mm. going to who's going to slip. A true game, a true game of cat and mouse. Yes. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> yes. Truly. Uh, what about you, Ryan? Um, I never really got into Truly. <laughs> the game Truly? The game Truly? <laughs> no, I feel like uh, for me, ironically, it wasn't when I was a kid. Is when I got into like board games and archi- it was actually in like uh, oh, later yeah. in life. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's like it's when I really start to appreciate. So picking one, I think Monopoly would probably be. Uh, the one that actually that or chess i think those two games are if i were to sit down and want to play a game with somebody i think i'd go monopoly or chess nice chess chess is chess is a it's a scholar's game a true it, yeah a true scholar's game with your <laughs> with, you need a pipe and a smoking jacket to play chess i feel like i love but, it uh, um boys we are nearing the uh end of our time i just want the end to of our time together um, yes. I, I also wanted, Ryan, we can cut this if you don't want us to plug it, but you've been, you've been dipping your toe into stand up. 
haven't you? I don't know. You're not. You, you can keep that in. Okay. No, that's all good. Do we, so do we have links those... to your stuff? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I thought you meant like we can talk about. It. Yeah, we can talk. So I'll I'll tell you something about me in terms of the stand up. So I have a buddy named Carl Brahenny. So if Carl Brahenny listens to this, shout out to Carl Brahenny. I'm saying his name funny because he spells it stupid, but he <laughs> is a person I used to live with. Very, very good friend of mine. I really, really like him. Um, he decided randomly, like, you know what? I'm going to get into stand up comedy. And I'm not going to say none of us saw it coming. Um, it was just something that I don't think everyone has a friend that pursues stand up comedy. Yeah. It's kind of more of a rare profession. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always went there to support him just all the time. I was just, you know, I'm not kind of, you know, just, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll come. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, let me watch it. Yeah. And this one time we were there at what, wherever we were, um, I was asked to try it out. Come up. Because I think they're having like microphone issues. They're yeah. like, all right, how we, how do we pass the time? Does anyone want to just mess around up here? Yeah. And I, I loved it. I was up there for maybe 10 minutes. Maybe it felt like 10 minutes. 10? Nice. Minutes. And I yeah. was just, I used the fact that I've never done it before and the fact that I was just called up out of the blue. So I, I think the expectations were low. Right. But it was, it was fun. It was fun. I liked, like, you know, the whole thing. So, yeah, then I did it a little bit after that. But I can tell you guys this, and this is breaking some serious news right here during this spectacular podcast. Mm-hmm. I never in my life and still to this day had any kind of dream of being in stand-up it kind of just fell into my lap so yeah. it's probably not something i'm going to keep doing but it's something where hey if someone were to ask me again hey come out there or yeah if there's a yeah i'm gonna say yes but and i'm I, not looking to like market it you know well i want to i want to come see you in a show once this is all passed so you got to do it at least that long yeah i'll do one more <laughs> just one more it's swan song <laughs> yes Here, right the ryan sheehan spectacular there you go. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, well, I want to thank Mr. Sheehan for joining us for the Spanktacular for yes. episode 100. Yes, cue uh, applause. It will not, here we go. It will not take another 100 episodes to get you back on the show. Maybe another it, 99, but definitely not a, another 100. It might. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, well, we want to say thanks to the kids. I'll do all the things in terms of subscribing and liking five stars, tell your friends. Uh, be sure to take some videos of you spanking your buns and hashtag it spanktacular uh, and send it to us because we're going to make this happen. Yep. Don't forget Thanks to for tell, having me, guys. Don't forget to tell people you love them yes. and all that jazz because you're in this trying time. And we Stay love safe. you. Stay safe. Goodbye Stay healthy. Bye to all the moms out there. We love yes. you, Mom. Bye, Mom. <laughs> Bye, Mom. <laughs> I'm just never going back Unless you force me to smoke crack Or do a